Welcome to Charlotte's Wandering Web with your adventurous guide to the good times, Charlotte Tweed. Each week, Charlotte takes you on the journey of a lifetime to a delightful Caribbean locale where the sun never sets on your good life at a great price. And now with her muy amigo, Carib Carter, here's your host, Charlotte Tweed. Hello, 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 and welcome to Charlotte's Wandering Web. I'm Carib Carter from Offshore Club, and uh, Charlotte is going to talk to say about Chapala, more information, in Mexico, and she said she has a surprise for us, which even I don't know. So let's get to it so I can find out along with you, folks. Charlotte, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Carter. How are you? I am good. I've got a little frog in my throat, but other than that, I'm good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you sound a little scratchy. A little, little scratchy, a little scratchy. You know, I went to the doctor and they, I told him, he said, what's wrong with you? I said, I got a frog in my throat, but also my shoulder and knees are hurt. So they took x-rays, right? I'll make this quick. So they called me today and said, well, you're old, so you have arthritis in your knees, but there's nothing wrong with your shoulder. And I said, well, somebody needs to tell my shoulder that because it hurts like hell. So, <laughs> that's, that's where I am. Now, where are you? How's well, Chapala? Chapala? Yeah, we visited Chapala on Sunday. We went for Mother's Day to spend the day. And what a beautiful place. I loved it. It's, it's more of a cross between Ajijic and Chula Vista. So it has a lot of the old and the new combined. And we took a walk along. We, we got there earlier in the morning. We took the cab to get there and uh, got there earlier in the morning. And there, was, there wasn't a ton of people around the Malacan, which is the boardwalk along Chapala. Walked along that, saw that statue that you showed a picture of last week. And I said, oh, you oh, did. I've never seen that statue. It's in actually in the town of Chapala. <laughs> okay. So you didn't have New York. You were, you were bang on with that one. Okay, it's not the Statue of Liberty, it's the Statue of Chapala. That's right, that's right. Whatever, yeah. yeah. And then we had lunch, and you know, lunch I had shrimp and octopus, um, what's it, cocktail. So that's what I had for lunch. My husband, of course, had a burger and fries. He's not as adventurous Good. as me. Uh, Good man. Beer and a margarita, and it was $20 for our lunch. Wow, wow, so, even with drinks. Even with drinks, yeah, even Fantastic. with drinks. Incredible. Fantastic. I mean, I don't order shrimp and octopus cocktail when I'm back in Canada because I can't afford it, and usually you can't get octopus there. But, uh, but yes, yeah, so we did that, and then walked around up the, the main street, walked along the whole whole um, boardwalk, the Malacan. The main street has an old church. It was full. Services were going on. There's stores. And something we saw that was really interesting, and it actually made my jaw drop, it was surprising for me, is you know how they set up all the little mom and pop taco stands? So it'll be a little yeah, yeah. family sets up their table and the umbrella and they bring all their food and everything. And there was a mother and her daughter cutting up vegetables. And I swear the daughter was maybe two years old. And that little girl had a knife and she was chopping up those vegetables just like her mother and she'd even look away and look at people and not miss a beat i had never i was like i wouldn't give my two-year-old a knife right <laughs> and i i that's the first time i think i've stopped and really stared at somebody in i was shocked and even D daryl my husband too he was like did you see that we couldn't yeah. believe the way this little girl could handle that knife it how was incredible. how old i would say maybe two two Maybe two. She was just a tiny little thing. I bet she couldn't even hardly talk yet. <laughs> it was unreal, you know. And with us, you can't ride a bike without a helmet, you know. Don't don't touch a sharp knife until you're at least ten years old, you know. It's, oh yeah, yeah. It's such a different culture that way. And even there, there was little miniature ponies along the Malacan. There was kids giving other kids little miniature pony rides, and they were so adorable dressed in their little cowboy suits giving little miniature pony rides and when we got back to the malacan after lunch after walking around town it was packed there was people everywhere families everywhere pregnant women everywhere grandparents you know with spending time with their children it was 
it was so heartwarming and so good oh to God. see. And wow. yeah, it people just enjoying the day and enjoying each other. Fantastic. What was the temperature? That day it was probably I was probably about 30 degrees Celsius, which is getting around the 90s. Around 90, but it didn't feel yeah. oppressive. No, no, not really. No. 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 You stay now, in the shade. A lot of people yeah. that Lake Chapala yeah. is it can be seen from outer space. So obviously the boardwalk does not go all the way around, right? No, no. And each little town, like Ahihik, has their own Malacan is what they call it, the boardwalk. Chapala has their own Malacan. And to me, sorry, Ahihik, but Chapala's Malacan was way better than Ahihik's wow. because there was there were a lot of restaurants along there. There were a lot of vendors lining the one side. There was vendors selling pretty much anything that you would want to buy, you know, food, drinks, clothes, shoes, sunglasses, hats. <laughs> it was easy to spend an afternoon there. Very relaxed atmosphere, friendly people. Very, you yes. didn't feel any, in, you know, you felt totally safe, obviously. Totally safe. Yeah, totally safe. And it was, yeah, uh, I think we might have been the only gringos there. We were very out of place there that way, but... <laughs> But no, very welcome. And yeah, it, it was just a really pleasant afternoon. That's being the only gringo. the way I used to feel when I used to go to Baltimore's Inner Harbor. You can, Now, you can't go there at all nowadays. But back when yeah. you could, you know, there was a time when it was just like you just described. Absolutely wonderful. It's, it, it, you know, it's, I'm interviewing a, a Baltimore legend radio television guy. Yeah. On Coffee with Carib Carter. Folks, that's Monday at noon at Offshore.com. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that. But that was, now, did, I guess most most of the, obviously most of the people were speaking Spanish, right? Most of them were. There were a lot of people. It, it really varies. Depends where you go. You know, a lot of the restaurants, there will be people there that do speak English. And then oh, really? you, know, you ask the next person and they're like, oh, poco, a little. So... Usually you can find somebody here. We've we've made out fine not knowing Spanish. Like we're, we're picking up phrases, and the longer we stay here, I mean, we should be taking Spanish lessons, and we will take Spanish lessons. But you can get by on very little Spanish, and because there is such a high amount of expats in Ahihik, a lot of the locals That's do right. speak English. So That's right. Well, you, I think you have a pretty good facility for language, right? Some people are, are quick on the pickup. Because Sometimes you're from Canada and you speak American very well. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's funny when we go to Europe, everybody thinks that we should be speaking French. They think can't Canadians speak French and it may, the Eastern maybe speak French, but the Western part of Canada, which is like a whole different country from the oh, East. Really, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. There, I did take French in school from grade three all the way to grade 10. Now you would think I would be fluent, yes. but I, I am not because I just did not take it serious enough. Yeah. Now, with that being said, if I would start learning French, I think it would pick it up very quick. And I think once I apply myself to Spanish, I will pick it up quickly as well. Because a lot of words do sound French and have, you know, even English sounds to them. So, yeah. Well, fortunately, I have, when my wife and I went up for her, her um, immigration interview the other day, the guy asked me, you know, how do you speak with your wife? Do you speak Spanish? And I told him, no, we both speak um, Spanglish. Oh, so, yes. Yeah. So we, and I imagine right at this, it sounds to me like you can get along very well with Spanglish uh, yeah, yeah. where you are. Yeah. Yeah. We could, you, I'm starting to understand more when people say something to me, what they're trying to say or a question so that I can at least say under comprehend what they're asking. So I can at least say yes or no and understanding yeah. what I'm saying yes or no to. So I have noticed that with going to the, the grocery stores or that type of thing, because generally they do speak to first in Spanish. So do, do, do you find the same thing in Mexico that I found in Honduras? And that is that when you're in a situation where there really isn't anyone speaking English, uh, to, I mean, behind the counter and all like in a store mm -hmm. that invariably somebody comes up and, and says, you know, what are you what are you trying to say? 
<laughs> well, the nice thing now is a lot of the local, locals will have Google Translate. <laughs> so if we can't, if I can't get across what I'm trying to say, and this did happen in Chapala, I was looking for a face mask, like face mask, like a face, skincare. And she did not speak English and we were trying and it's no, we couldn't come up with any words. And finally, somebody who was working with her, who was quite young, pulled up her phone and I'm like, yes, Google Translate and put it in. Oh, Google Translate. Yeah. 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 It Folks, very that's helpful. very important. Google Translate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only way my wife and I spoke for the first five years we went together through <laughs> Google Translate. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So. So do you eat dinner there on the uh, boardwalk as well? Oh, we had a snack. We t we actually caught the bus back to where we're staying in Chula Vista and had dinner in Chula Vista. And the bus is a little bit of an adventure because we had a hard time finding the bus stop to begin with. <clears throat> One of the locals gave us some directions. Go all the way to the Malacan. You can't go any farther. Turn up the street. And there's the bus stop and that will take you back to just say go to walmart and it'll drop you off at walmart which is where we wanted that's where we would normally get dropped off and we walked all the way down there couldn't find the bus like there's no bus here so then we walked back to the main street and waited at the bus there uh, to take us to walmart and when we did get on the bus it did actually take us by this little blue sign that just had a picture of a bus on on it and that's where we should have waited so uh, we just weren't paying close enough attention, but now we know, now we know where the bus stop is. And it was only, I believe it was only nine pesos per person to take the bus back. And it was about a seven or eight kilometer bus ride back. So and how so, much would that be in dollars? Do you think it's under a dollar? Under a dollar. About 20 pesos is about a one us dollar. So it was less than a dollar for both my husband and I to get a seven kilometer bus ride back. It's fantastic. It's yeah. fantastic. Now, was it a chicken bus or a regular bus? It was a regular bus. They don't have chicken buses in Mexico. You serious? Yeah, they don't have chicken buses. We we asked one of the locals that from where we were staying before, do you guys have these? And they're like, no, no. Our buses here are very nice. They the the buses between the towns are just an average bus. You know, they're nothing nothing yeah. fancy. But the bus system, if you were going to go, let's say we wanted to get a bus to San Miguel or go back to Mexico City, their buses are very fancy. They have TVs, they have comfortable seats, they have their air conditioned. I have heard very good things about the bus transportation across Mexico. Oh, did we lose Carter? Yep, technical difficulties. Uh -oh. he, he keeps using his phone. That's what it is. Right. Oh, he's using his phone. Well, you can edit. Yep. Yeah, there I we can. go. There that's the go. joy of editing. <laughs> no, that's the worst part. Of editing. That's why we have an expert. <laughs> that's my son. My son does the editing for my uh, videos I do with Erica, and sometimes he'd be like, "That was easy," and then the next time he's about ready to. <laughs> yeah. Up, so. yeah. 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 All right. I'll leave you back to it. So, so we had, we were, you know, when I asked about the chicken bus, I realized, you know, we had a lot of viewers and there's some who may not be aware of what I meant when I said the chicken bus, the, uh, it, when, when I lived in Honduras, I think you saw the same thing in Nicaragua, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The chicken bus, they, it, they are like, they were old American in, in Honduras. They're old American school buses. And mm -hmm. you'll see you'll, the bus will stop for you in Honduras and it'll say dorm public schools on the side. Right. <laughs> yes. And they're usually very psychedelic looking, brightly painted. Yes. All kinds of colors. And when they're, they're jam packed with people and apparently the odd time a chicken or maybe even a turkey. <laughs> and I, the whole time for a year down there, I read one every day and I only saw one chicken and he was very well behaved. I oh, will say that. Good. Yeah. That's yeah. I did. I, and one goat. I, both, both of whom were very well behaved. So, but in Mexico, in Mexico, no chicken buses. No chicken buses. Wow. No, no chicken buses. Wow. So are you, you finding Mexico pretty modern? 
pretty yeah. modern place to live. Yeah, it is. And I sent some pictures of where we're staying to some friends we made in Nicaragua. <clears throat> and they said the same thing. They're, wow, it looks like a first world country compared to to Nicaragua, because Nicaragua is still a, quite a bit behind. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's it's very modern, especially where we are now with uh, Ahihik, with so many expats, because this is the highest concentration of expats, out, of American expats, especially outside of the United States, is where we are. So there, you know, a lot of them have put a lot of effort and money into the community as well to bring things up to standards. I've seen signs up on boardwalks where, you know, it's the foreigners who put the money into in, improve the boardwalk and that type of thing. So, and we got a letter the other day, which I know you were kind enough to answer to offshore club mm -hmm. from, I won't normally I say the first name and not the last name because I want to protect people's privacy. And on this one, the first name is Asian. So I don't, I, I can't even do that to protect the privacy <laughs> because for all I know it may be a unique Asian name, but, but she asked the, you know, um, I'm interested in Mexico. Do you have more information? You were kind enough to respond. I want people to understand if you have any questions about Mexico, mm -hmm. send them to, to, well, they can send them to the offshore club or mm -hmm. do you have, a, or they can send them to you at escape artists, right? Well, they could, or even like you said, responding how that person did and you forward it on. That's perfectly fine as well, but Good. they can contact me through the escape artist website as well. There is a contact form there. And if something comes in that if they have a question about Mexico and say, I'd like to hear from Charlotte, what she has to say about this, I will get it and I will respond. Great. Great. Yeah. So now how far, I, I know I've asked you this before, but the more you talk about where you are, the more I think about when I visited Chet Yamal, very, mm -hmm. they have the, the, the boardwalk like you're talking about mm -hmm. and just, you have a very modern feeling but it's kind of a mix. You don't feel like you're in plastic world, like you end up doing here sometime in the U S yeah. sometime. Yeah. What do you think about that? I agree. It's a, a very good mix and it it's made us feel very comfortable, very quick, especially with where we've moved here now. I mean, there's things I, I love history. I love the old buildings, but there's something really nice to be in a, in a, staying where we are in this two bedroom condo that also makes it feel very much like home. So I've settled into this very, very quick. It, it feels like I am in my own place. The kitchen is equipped exactly the way I would equip it. It's a big kitchen. I think I said last week, it's got granite countertops, everything in it. So when we're here, it almost feels like we're not even in Mexico until we go back to the market. You know, we walk to the market and and go back to Ahihik or go to one of the towns and walk in the downtown. Then you feel like you're in Mexico. Yeah. A very yeah. open and friendly atmosphere, yeah. Which, yeah. which I just love. Yeah. So I, I just, I just find the Latino people to be very friendly, very open, very warm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously I'm biased since my wife is on door. <laughs> I'd yeah. be in a mess if I didn't find them that way. But uh, <laughs> No, we, everybody's been very welcoming to us, very welcoming, very friendly. You know, when we eat out, they're friendly. Service is good. When we walk down the streets, people are starting to recognize us now at different little stands at the markets where we go to. And, you know, oh, buenos dias, amigo. Yeah, it's it's very welcoming and it is safe. I, I still get questions and I still get comments and, you know, emails, well, this is kind of freaky and it's a government advisory. Don't go here in Mexico. Don't go here, 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 because there's an increase in kidnappings. There's an increase in robberies. There's an increase in, we have experienced none of that. No. Does that mean none of it's happening? No. I mean, yes, there are, there are things happening, but are, is the government reporting on how many murders are happening in Edmonton? Is the government, you know, saying, don't go to Edmonton. Is it saying that to the Canadians, which is one of the murder capitals of the world, well, you know, yeah. and yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't want to get all too political on you, Carter, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't mind. stop I don't mind. listening <laughs> to the government. <laughs> Do not, yeah, you know, because you nailed it. They don't want you to leave and they're just pushing fear on you so that you do not go. So go and see it and experience it yourself. We have been in Mexico for five months. 
Wow. We've never had our pockets picked. We've never been threatened. We've, it's been safe. We walked all around a hee in day and into the evening. Like I think 11 o'clock at night was the latest we were out. You just need to be aware of your surroundings. If you're not going to go out and go and get, you know, wasted at the bar and wander home, you're going to be just fine. That's, that mm -hmm. is, that's really the key. It's just, and let's face it, it's not like they look at you and just think you're just another one of the uh, Omegas there, mm -hmm. Latina Omegas. You do not look like no. you belong. Yeah. yeah. No. But I'm not wearing jewel. When I go out, I'm not wearing jewelry. I'm not flashing. I'm just wearing just normal, plain, boring clothes so that I don't stand out that it's like, yeah, we, we got to follow her and, you know, rob the diamonds off her fingers. I, I'm not wearing any of that. You just. Yeah. Good. I have a feeling if you were, you know, it, that, that, you know, obviously you look entirely different and they're not singling you out, which no. the, the U.S. State Department tries to everybody. When you go there, they're going to single you out. I, you know, it, it just, yeah. it ain't so. It ain't so. I, you know, yeah. The, you do not look like a senorita. No. Or senora, whatever the right term is. No. <laughs> so, uh, what is it? Gringa? gringa? Gringa. You do not look. Yeah. You look like a gringa. You definitely. No. I, I went to the, got a haircut yesterday and I said to the woman, I said, you got it. it, it my hair is not normally it, this dark, right? But my Latina wife is obsessed with me making it darker, right? Oh. Because I have great gray in my hair. So I told the woman, I said, I keep trying to tell my wife. I am not a Latino. I do not have black hair. When you make me color it, I look like my cousin Vinny. <laughs> 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 but, but but when I'm when I've been in Honduras, I you know I'm like you. I I don't look like a Lat like an amigo, and I have never been no. treated anything but kindly, which is yeah. fantastic. And it just you don't come down here and act like you're entitled either, like or try and push my views or the way things should be on them. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And who are you going to listen to? Me who's been here for five months or someone who's told you to stay home for the last two years? <laughs> I, I think that pretty well sums it up right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to believe me or your own eyes, right? It's just <laughs> perfect. All right. Well, this has been fantastic. This is great uh, before news. we leave, remember, uh -oh. I have some good news. All right. Play it on, so, on us. We found out last week, remember I had mentioned that we'd heard about this immigration program or a, a temporary residency program. So we did hear back from our immigration lawyer that we do qualify to apply for temporary residency here in Mexico. So we qualify for the amnesty program. So I was so excited. I cried. I cried. <laughs> So, because normally you have to go back to your home country to apply for residency in Mexico. But because of the COVID situation, Mexico put a special uh, program in place, their amnesty program, that if you have entered Mexico twice within the last uh, five years, and your current entry into Mexico was before the end of December 2021, you could apply for this special program. And I did not know this program existed until we came here. And the realtor who was showing us around told us about it. So fantastic. If, so we're just waiting now. He, the lawyer said, great, you know, I have good news for you. I already heard back from immigration. You are eligible to apply for the amnesty program. Please fill out these forms, which were very basic. So I filled out the forms, sent them back. He said, perfect. Now we're just waiting to hear back to see if we qualify. And then we can stay here for four years. Fan, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. That oh. is great. So your plan B is totally in place now. Oh, yeah. And it's honest. I have slept really well since we got that news. It's just, yeah. it, I mean, it's not all 100% yet, but it's pretty, it sounds pretty positive. So it sounds great. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. I'm thank thrilled. You. I really am. Yeah. And thank you for all the, you know, these updates on Mexico are fantastic because I know a lot of, a lot of, uh, offshore club members, a lot of escape artist followers are looking to Mexico and saying, mm -hmm. what's it really like? And you have laid it on the line mm -hmm. because you, as you said, you're the one who's there. So that's yeah. great. We love it here. It's fantastic. You can live, you can have a lifestyle here again. You can go out and eat, you can buy groceries and buy whatever you want, and you can still have a comfortable 
life and not everybody is telling you what to do and how to live it. It's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. This Thank has been you. wonderful. This was a great wonder. Thank All you right. very, very much. So there you have it, folks. Excellent. And that that is, you cannot beat that. Charlotte, you know, she is obviously a wonderful person and she's living the life and she's telling you like it is so it can be like that for you. So as I always tell you, let's do this thing. 